So yeah, you were a former Olympic wrestler. How was it competing in the Olympics? And when did you first start like jumping rope? And like, what way did that relate to when you were wrestling? Um, you know, or any other physical sports that you you know done during your career? Well, let me let me just tell you real quick, just a little quick uh, thing about how I got started. But uh, simply, anybody that any Olympian to tell you that uh, the Olympics represents the pinnacle of any sporting event. It's, it's, the, it's the most amazing experience, and, it, and it's surreal. Basically, mm -hmm. it's a surreal experience, and you can't really explain it to people because uh -huh. it's sometimes beyond what it is that you dream. It's beyond, and they do everything to make this the most spectacular event in your life, and you'll remember this thing for the rest of your life. Wow. So it's like, can you imagine, you know, setting a goal when you're a kid or when you're a teenager and staying so focused and committed to this goal and being knocked down on your butt and feel like giving up and finding the, the commitment to recommit, to fight for, the, for this dream that you can't see sometimes, but you know it's there. Wow. And then at the end, you basically accomplish this dream. And then once you make that dream come true, it becomes even bigger. Just making an Olympic team is wow. a dream. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> takes, I can imagine. It, it does. <laughs> it takes everything out of you. It takes everything on mind, body, and spirit. Everything has to be in balance. It's, it's the hardest thing I ever did in my life. Wow. Because I was competing against a guy that I was competing against that I had wrestled against for eight years. And we were like the top two guys in the country. So how do you beat... So, yeah. The number one guy in the country, when you wrestle this guy maybe 15 times, <laughs> how do you have that perfect day when yeah. the rest of the world is watching and when it really matters to make the Olympic team? How do you beat this guy when basically the only thing that's separating you is the referee's decision? That's A crazy. referee saying, oh, he stalled, we're going to give him one. That's crazy. It's zero, zero. Yeah. So on that perfect day on Olympic trials, I had, I had a perfect day, and I did some amazing things to prepare for it. And I beat this person 2-0, 2-0 to be the best two out of three to make the Olympic team. And then I had to duplicate that performance. <laughs> yeah. I had to duplicate that performance in Olympic Games with a broken arm. Oh, and, uh, and my best, and I was ranked number one, two going into the Olympics because I had beaten everybody. I beat the Olympic gold medalist two weeks before the Olympic wow. Games. And I beat everybody. And basically, uh, I had a... Not a good match in the semifinals. Got injured and um, and I couldn't. Uh, they they didn't allow me to wrestle because I got a concussion, and I ended up with sixth place, top six in the world. That was my worst uh, my worst uh, performance, but top six in the world out of a hundred maybe twenty countries. Wow! <laughs> I'll take that any day. Of course. So I, I think I was still successful. Of course, that's that's. Listen, even to get to, to the Olympics. So if someone was to say that you're an Olympian, that's respect already you know and to yep. even compete at the games you know and not just that but to be number six that's that's a that's a, that's a lifetime achievement that you know no not, you know it's rare to come across well you know people they you know we the media is always built up oh you got to work first second third but um people don't understand they don't understand because well wrestling doesn't get the exposure that the other sports Wrestling is the classical Olympic sport. Mm -hmm. Wrestling is the oldest sport on the face of this earth. It's wow. back in biblical times. Even Abraham Lincoln in our country, he was a wrestler. Um, the Secretary of Defense was a wrestler. I can go on and on. But it's wow. one of the oldest sports. And so the rest of the world, they don't, they don't need technology to be advanced in wrestling. You got countries like <laughs> Russia, Iran. Yeah. You, anywhere in the world, you got these men are great. No mm. matter where they are, men and women, because it's a boat, it's for two styles. So it's a very, very tough sport. And as you can see in MMA, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's the wrestlers dominating. That's 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 who's winning. That's who's that's who's when they when they get to that ground and pound. If you're you know if you're if you're a good puncher or kicker when you're in ground and pound, that doesn't that doesn't mean anything when you get to that ground. You know, it's 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 all about the wrestling. Yeah, it provides a great foundation for understanding how to take advantage of a of, 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 of a person you know from standing from on the bottom and then you take the wrestler and then you teach them uh submission techniques mm. you 
teach them how to punch, how to use the elbows, and you teach them how to choke, mm. <laughs> then you got a, a very, very dangerous machine there. Of course. Kick, yes. punch, you know, using elbows or whatever. So I kind of learned Sambo. I was second in the world at Sambo. Wow. I was three-time world military champion and, and Greco-Roman freestyle. Uh, and overall in the world, I took top four in the world, which that year I should have won my world title. But, you know, it's, it's not about the wins and losses. Mm. It's what I learned in the journey Definitely. of striving for athletic excellence. Wow. I learned a great deal about myself and I learned a great deal about life. Mm -hmm. And it's those things that I learn about life, those life skills, this is what I'm using right now today to become who I am. And these are the things, these lessons that I learned in striving for athletic excellence. This is what I try to communicate to the world that, hey, you and you and you have everything within yourselves mm. to become a great person, to become a true champion in life. Mm -hmm. But you got to just basically... Search for it and, and tap the right button, tap the right button, man, and prepare yourself and go for your dream. Amazing, I love that. Well, Definitely. let me let me let me just jump in real quick and just finish that other part. How did I get started in jumping? Yeah, rope? so how did you start jumping rope, and and did you do it, you know, when when you were wrestling, or and how did it relate to your wrestling? I mean, how how does jumping rope transpire to to a sport like wrestling or MMA, in your opinion? Well, let me tell you about my best friend, my best training partner, the greatest training tool on the face of this earth, my jump rope. And I've told this story about 5,000 times. I've done 5,000 presentations plus in 60 countries around the world. This, is ever, this has also been uh, presented to the president of the United States wow. back in Clinton days. And, uh, and, it, and basically after the presentation i became the official jump rope conditioning coach to all the olympic teams but i was introduced to the jump rope by a martial artist you see uh -huh. coming up as a kid i was one of six children and i was raised single-handedly by a mother my father fought in the vietnam war and he came back messed up like many vietnam vets and he was never around and my mm -hmm. father, and right before the 1992 games, he was killed. Yeah. But uh, my mom, she did the best she could to put food on the table, roof over our heads, clothes on our backs. But my mom couldn't be there all the time. Mm -hmm. So, so, But she did the best to make sure you were in church. She taught us good values and said, if you want to be something like you got to go to school. Mm -hmm. And so the rest of the choices, we it was up to us. And I was surrounded by the, the games, and I was all surrounded by good guys. And I just made a choice. Everything is... Really within yourself, everything Definitely. is about the choices that you make in life 100%. from the beginning to the end. And they start young. And the choices that you make today, they can affect you tomorrow. Definitely. So be careful how you choose. So I chose to, to follow the path of this next door neighbor who was a fourth degree black belt in karate. Every day this guy used to run miles and miles, do hundreds of push-ups. He ran like a gazelle. He break, broke bricks. He was considered one of the best martial artists on the East Coast. And one day, I saw this gentleman. His name was Mr. Herbert Rainey. And he was kind of like my role model, mm -hmm. jumping rope. Now, like most guys, I thought jump rope was for girls and <laughs> sissies and all this stuff because I had two sisters. They would always jump rope and they'd be doing all this, you know, kiddish stuff in the front yard and all that stuff. And I said, man, it's for girls. But see, when I saw a fourth degree black belt in karate and a guy that I consider to be one bad dude jumping rope, hey, it dispelled that misconception. <laughs> hey, man, this is for men. This is yeah, a serious yeah. thing. So he was in the front yard jumping the rope. I said, man, I went up to him and I tapped on the shoe. I said, hey, Mr. Rainey, can you show me how to jump? <laughs> and he looked at me and he said, sure, grasshopper. I'll show you how to jump. And he said, the key to jumping is to be light on the ball of your feet. And he said, buddy, if you can hear your feet hit the floor or hit the ground, you're jumping too hard. So when you jump, man, you got to be light on the balls of your feet. And you got to make small circles with your wrists and looking straight ahead. This was one hot summer day when I was about 14 years of age, mm. going to the ninth grade, to the 10th. And I spent five hours straight trying to master the two basic skills. Wow. Five hours straight 
dropping that rope. It was tough in the beginning. I was real heavy on my feet. And I say, I know I can do this mm. because I made a commitment saying I believe in myself that I can. I will. I must be able to master this because I knew that if I could master this jump rope, it could make me a better wrestler. And as a kid, I had to do everything I could to get to college. Mm -hmm. I had to base because my mom couldn't send us to college. Okay. So I knew that if I was a good athlete, I could win a scholarship. And I knew that this jump rope could help me become a better wrestler. Uh -huh. And I integrated this into my wrestling training, Tyrone. And this is a true story. I never put that rope down. And um, I integrated into my wrestling training. It provided advantages in speed, quickness, conditioning. I mean, superior conditioning. Balance, coordination, incredible reflexes. It helped me with my weight loss. And for the next three years in wrestling, I only lost two wrestling matches and became the school's first state wrestling champion. And then in my senior year, I got 15 scholarship offers to colleges around the United States that paid wow. for all my education. Wow. And that's what the jump rope did. It made me the three-time district, three-time regional champion, the best wrestling in the state of Virginia in, in, in my weight class. And basically, 15 scholarship offers. That's crazy. That, that jump rope was the key to my success. And when I got to college, I didn't take it out. I went to college, Old Dominion University, on a full wrestling scholarship. There, I set 15 college records. I became a three-time All-American. I became voted the outstanding male athlete of every sport for three out of the four years, the best freshman athlete of the year, best senior athlete of the year, academic All-American, and top in the country in my weight class. And I tell you what, I graduated in education, and I wasn't finished there. Went into the U.S. Marines. They recruited me to come for their national wrestling team. Wow. Made the national wrestling team for straight 11 years in a row. I was the best Marine athlete in the, in the world for the next 10 years. And I was voted the best Marine athlete in the world for the net for two times. I was a three-time world military champion. And out of those 11 years that I competed in the Marines, I won 20 national titles and three styles of wrestling. Wow. I competed in 10 world championships. Three That's world titles. Crazy. <laughs> Three world runner ups. And all of this was known for Buddy Lee and his jump rope because every match I would jump rope and I would go out there and win the national title. That's and that's crazy. how I became famous for jump rope because this guy would perform for the whole nation and then three matches later go out and win the national title. Or if I didn't win, I took second. And the less I could do was third. And that's where I started, third, second, and then I started winning national title. And then that's how my jump rope phenom thing started getting recognized in the sport of reps. That's crazy. That is absolutely amazing and story. that's how jump rope ended up in Olympic Games. <laughs> wow. So the jump rope, it wasn't about wrestling for me anymore. Because, see, when I jump rope, Tyrone, you know what it did? It got people excited. Mm. It motivated people. It mm. brought people together. People didn't care what country they're from. They say when every country that I went to, they say, "Hey, we want Buddy Lee to perform before okay. they before the finals. Can he perform?" And it brought people together. And then I say, "Man, this is magic. Mm. This rope is bringing people together. It's making people happy. It's breaking down barriers. It's improving friendships." Mm. So this thing was more than just jump rope, man. Of course, this of is course. my tool. Of how, what I use to get the world's attention and make an impact on the world, to transform the world, to bring it to together, bring amazing. the world together. It's amazing, amazing. This is this is the rope to success. Wow, that's 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 an amazing story, you know. Wow, that's that's crazy. You know, some <laughs> sometimes when I speak to people, like rarely do I become like speechless, and this is like one of those moments, like you hear the story and you're like, damn. You know, it's, 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 it's all real and it's in my book Jump Rope incredible. Training, second edition a little bit of it is in my book when I do speeches around the world I've done thousands of speeches for corporations for, you know, for millionaires on what it takes to be your best mm. and this is what you gotta have each and every one of us we have a story inside of us you have a story mm -hmm. and we have a we have a responsibility to mankind to be able to share our knowledge and help each other. Because when you reach a level of success 
and you say and you ask God, hey, God, I want to be this. Help me to be this and be that. And God gives you your wish. And when you become when you get there and then you ask, OK, OK, I got everything I want in life. Now, what is my responsibility? Mm-hmm. Your responsibility is to mankind and to womankind yeah. and to the human, human, mm-hmm. the human, the human race is to go back and motivate them mm. and inspire them that they have everything in them to have an amazing life and to be a great person and become a champion in life. I love that. I love that. There times a week and I was like, would you put in? So we know that the first time you said you spent like five hours straight. And then was that like a, a frequent thing or the more you got better at jumping rope, sort of the more the less time you, you would do? And did you always like incorporate that into, you know, your workout? Or training. Well, that's that's some, that was a kid being inspired by an older gentleman, which I take on tour with me now. By oh, wow. him showing me something that changed my life. So when kids or when everybody sees something that motivates them, they're trying to spend a lot of time. And time flies when you're having fun. Of course. So, but when I started integrating this into my training as a wrestler in high school and college, it became an integral, a significant part of my training regimen. Mm-hmm. It was like one hour, one and a half hours of conditioning with the rope, doing different kinds of routines, simulating the energy systems that I use in my sport, uh-huh. high intensity training, simulating different kinds of foot patterns that I use in my sport that transferred over to better performance and movement or efficient movements in my sport. So in, in how I train today, or how I had trained when I was competing, mm-hmm. it was used as a warm up before I did anything else. Because mm-hmm. jump rope is a total body movement that incorporates every single muscle in the body that allows you to raise the core body temperature quicker than any other exercise because mm-hmm. of all the different muscles integrated. So it was used as a warm up before my training, and I used it for about you know 10 or 15 minutes because I was an accomplished jumper. Mm-hmm. And then after I finished my training, as a Marine, because I trained about 10 hours a day, wow. I used to spend two hours conditioning with the ropes. Wow. And that's how I became known as probably one of the most fittest and most highly conditioned wrestlers in the world and also competing in longest overtime wrestling match that stood for about 20 years, that long longest overtime wrestling match did. So, yeah. So now, how do you integrate it? You should, you know, fitness is about doing something every day, five days a week. Mm-hmm. And um, I try to get into the gym about four days a week. And I would say about one hour is jump rope training, doing different things. <laughs> and then I'm doing my strength training and flexibility about another hour for that. Lovely. So so for you, you don't have to take over board for, the, for recommendations for fitness. You only need 10 minutes. Mm-hmm. 10 minutes of jumping can provide the same cardiovascular benefits as 30 minutes of jogging, two sets of tennis, 30 minutes of racket, 18 holes of golf, 12 minutes of swimming. And that's when you're doing it just two revolutions per second, which is just like normal, normal. It's just from gravity. The rope turns the rope around mm-hmm. one time per second. Wow. So two turns per second is nothing. Wow. So it's at a very slow pace that you can get those kind of benefits according to research.